Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, especially all you homework club kids. I miss you guys very, very much and I hope you're doing well and staying healthy and safe. Now, if you're new here, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Emma and today we will be reading a book, not just one, but two books. So, what books you may ask? Our first book is Monster School, a spooky sleepover. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with our videos, hint, hint, go watch our videos. We've already read one book from this series where Norm, the gentleman right here, holding his toothbrush, is new to school and new to class. And he goes on a journey of becoming more confident and learning how to make friends. A very important lesson that we can all benefit from. I'm excited to see what we can take away from this book today. Now, our second book, as always, at the end of our videos, we do a chapter book. We are now on Judy Bloom's Super Fudge, which I'm excited to dive back into as well. Now, of course, of course, of course, we have to talk about our riddle. Our riddle today, I know I said our last riddle was my favorite, but this riddle, I think, is honestly my new favorite. I'm just gonna be topping the riddles. They're just gonna get better and better. So, without further ado, our riddle is, what's something you can put in your pocket and it'll keep your pocket empty? I'll let you guys think on it. And as always, at the end of our video, I will check back in to see if you guys have figured it out. Now, let's get to reading. All right, so let's jump right into our book. Monster School, The Spooky Sleepover. Norm was going to a sleepover. He was very nervous. It was his first time sleeping away from home. Norm wanted to bring too much. He really did. He even wanted to bring his goldfish. This sleepover wasn't at a friend's house. It was at Norm's school. All the kids were little monsters, but that's not what worried him. I miss my bed already, said Norm. Norm wasn't like the other kids. He could not turn into a bat. He did not howl at the moon. Norm did not cry out of 10 eyeballs. He only had two. Norm was just normal. Norm's class had sold the most at the school bake sale. They had won a sleepover in the library. Why does the prize have to be so scary? Norm asked. Miss Grunt was the librarian. She was nice, but she was a zombie. Grrrr, she said. This did not help Norm feel safe. Miss Klops was Norm's teacher. Norm had never seen a teacher in her pajamas. Her eye already looked sleepy. Norm thought she might also have an eye in the back of her head because she caught the paper airplane out of the sky. Sometimes I feel like teachers do have eyes in the back of their heads. They just know. Story time, Hilda yelled. Of course it's a spooky story, Norm mumbled. Norm held his bunny tight. Hilda hugged her salamander. Bianca got in trouble for talking to herself. Oh no, Gil fell asleep already, cried Frankie. Gil snored through his gills. That's just gross, Norm said. Pizza time, Gary shouted. Gary is here? Asked Norm. I can't see him. Ghosts are like that, said Hilda. The pizza that Gary was eating fell right onto the floor. Splat. Hey, I'm still hungry, said Gary. Harry turned Harry. He ate two whole cheese pizzas. He ate the boxes, too. He will have bad dreams, Norm said. Movie time, Hilda yelled. It's a scary movie, of course, Norm muttered. Hey, look, that is my Uncle Walt, said Vinny. Vinny was so excited that he turned into a bat. Later, Norm brushed his teeth. Other kids brushed their fangs. One girl brushed her face. A boy clipped his claws. That's a little 
rude, said Norm. They got their sleeping bags ready. Bianca forgot one of her pillows. Elsa forgot her bunny slippers. Isaac lost his fuzzy blanket and cried his eyes out. All ten of them. Mort's sleeping bag had sand in it. How can you sleep with sand? asked Norm. It reminds me of home, said Mort. I couldn't sleep with sand or a mouse in my head, said Norm. Oh, it's the snake in my tummy that keeps me awake, said Mort. Hilda, Bianca, and the other girls played a trick on the boys. Norm jumped up. Mort's, Mort's mouse ran away. Minnie flew home, but Gil just kept on snoring through his gills. You can see he's out cold. Soon, everyone settled down, but Norm could not sleep. He began to sniff. Everybody asked him what was wrong. I can't fall asleep. I do not have my nightlight. My cat's not sleeping with me. And my mother did not hum a sweet tune for me. Aw, poor Norm. Oh, don't worry, Norm, said Gary. I can glow for you all night. And I can make a cat, said Hilda. Zap! She turned her salamander into a cat that curled up and went to sleep at Norm's feet. And I'm an expert at humming sweet songs, said Miss Klops. She sat in Gary's glow and hummed sweet songs for Norm. Soon, Norm smiled and closed his eyes. Sleepovers can be scary, he thought but it sure helps to be surrounded by some good friends. Aw, and you could see Norm's all happy and snuggled up now. I hope you guys enjoyed that book. And now that we have finished our monster school, the spooky sleepover, let's jump right into our positive action or positive tip of the day. Today, our positive action or positive tip is going to focus on, again, the action of self-improvement. Now, this might sound familiar because we talk about self-improvement a lot on this channel because, like I always say, we are trying to become the best people we can be. I know I'm trying to be the best Emma I can be, and I hope you're trying to be the best you you can be. Now, this is going to help us because today we're going to talk about Situations where maybe we could use an excuse to get out of it, but instead asking for help so that we can finish strong and maybe learn something new. Now, an example of this could be, I know this has happened to me numerous times. I'm at home, I don't understand my math homework, and I'm getting confused and I'm getting overwhelmed. And it's really easy in those situations to make an excuse, right? My teacher didn't teach the lesson well enough, so... I'm just gonna ignore my homework and deal with it tomorrow. It's easier to do that, but it's better and it'll help us in the long run if you reach out for help. If you say, hey, mom, grandma, aunt, whoever is there, can you help me? I'm not really understanding what's being asked of me on my homework, I'm not getting it. Now, they might not always get it, but they'll try and help you. Maybe they can connect you to a resource that can help you. Maybe they can call their brother and their brother is an expert in the math problem they're doing. So no worries. And special little pro tip, if you are having trouble with your math homework, there are a bajillion YouTube videos online that can help you with your specific problems. So just type in the topic you're looking at or trying to figure out and there's just so many resources for you to use. Now, hopping back into positive action, see how we've now taken a situation where we were not gonna do our homework, we were gonna make an excuse, and now we've taken a step back, we've asked for help, and we've learned something new. Now, like I always say, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it will help us so much on our journey to becoming the best us. And I hope that you guys can take something away from this lesson. And now that we've talked about our positive action or positive tip of the day, let's move on to our super fudge. If you guys last remember, we left off our book, Super Fudge, Peter really, really has to go to the bathroom. Fudge will not 
get off the toilet, especially now that he's wet in his pants. He needs his toilet time. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> I remembered that my teacher had read us a book about life in England in the 18th century. People used chamber pots instead of toilets way back then. I wish we had an old chamber pot handy. I was getting desperate. I ran into the living room and looked around. We have a big plant over in the corner. It stands more than five feet high. Should I? I wondered. No, that's disgusting, I thought. But when you gotta go, you gotta go, I reminded myself. I was seriously considering it. As I was thinking, Fudge called, Okay, Peta, I'm done. You do the flush. Fudge refuses to flush the toilet. He's afraid he'll go down the drain too. But this wasn't the time to try and convince him he was wrong. I raced down the hall and relieved myself. Fudge watched. He was really impressed. I never saw so much at once, he said. Thanks, I told him. That night, we were all sitting around the living room watching TV. I was holding Tootsie on my lap. She let out a soft little sigh. She's a lot like Turtle when she's asleep. I can tell what kind of dream he's having by the noises he makes. And sometimes when he's having a nightmare, he cries out and shakes. Then I pet him until he's calm again. It's the same with Tootsie. She'll be fast asleep, but she'll make these little noises or cry out and wiggle around. Other times, she'll work her mouth just like she's sucking on the bottle. I guess she dreams about eating a lot. But the little sighs are my favorite because I know she's content and she feels so warm and soft lying in my arms. That way, I feel good all over. As soon as the show is over, Dad snapped off the TV turned to face us and said, we have some really good news for you boys. Oh no, not again, I said, looking down at Tootsie. Mom and dad laughed. Something different this time, dad said. Is it interesting? Fudge asked, racing his little cars across the floor. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Yes, very interesting, mom said. Well, don't keep us in suspense, I said. Let's hear it. Is suspense like privilege? Fudge asked. No, I told him. Now listen. I looked at my father. Well, I asked. Because their idea of something interesting and my idea of something interesting aren't necessarily the same. We're moving to Princeton, Dad said. Where what? I wanted to jump up, but I couldn't. Not with Tootsie on my lap. Is Princeton near the park? Fudge asked running his little red car up and down mom's leg. No, it's in New Jersey. Is New Jersey near the park? He asked. Not Central Park, mom said. But you won't need Central Park, dad said, because you'll have your own backyard. What's a backyard? Fudge asked. It's like a small park, mom told him. My own park, Fudge said. More or less, dad said to shut him up. What about art history? I said to mom. What about it? She answered. I thought you were going to go back to school to study art history. Princeton University has an art history department. I may take classes there. It's just for a year, dad said, looking at me, to see how we like being away from the city. Away, 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 Fudge sang. You can't have the conversation in front of him. It's useless. Couldn't my mother and father see that? We're going next week, Dad said. What about Maine? I asked. We always go to Maine for two weeks in the summer. M-A-I-N-E spells Maine. Fudge sang. M-A-I-N-E. How does he know how to spell Maine? Mom asked. I have no idea, Dad said. So what about it? I pressed. Are we going to Maine? We're going to Princeton instead, Dad told me. Instead, 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 Fudge babbled. Be quiet, I yelled at him. And just as I said it, I shouted even louder, I hate Princeton. And we'll leave it right 
there. So big turn of events, right? They're moving to Princeton. They're leaving New York City. They're moving to a different state. A lot of big stuff is happening for Peter. He's got a new sibling and he's moving. I'm excited to see what happens the next time we continue reading. So tomorrow's video. So if you want to know what's going to happen, I'll see you tomorrow. But before I say my goodbyes, we have a riddle, don't we? Our riddle was, if you guys remember, what's something that you can put in your pocket that'll keep it empty? Did you figure it out? It's kind of a tricky one. It's a hole. Get it? Because everything will fall out. Keeps it empty. I hope you guys enjoyed our video and our riddle, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Thank you for watching.